Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery. I hope you are doing well. Today we're gonna to talk about how I clean up pots after a wood firing, because you can see several pots there behind me, and I have a bunch more in my shed here that uh, some of them have wads stuck on the bottom still, much like this mug here, and it's not a good idea to just take a putty knife or a chisel and try to chip those off, because you can break the mug or chip out the bottom of it, and so I have tools and techniques on how I do that, and I wanna share that with you today, so let's go. Most of the tools you'll see me use in this video have links in the description of where you can find them. Uh, the first up is the headphones. Those do not have a link in the description because you should be able to find decent headphones just about anywhere. The uh, face mask and respirator, this is something I love for cleaning shelves or for cleaning pots because it will protect my face, my eyes, and my lungs all at the same time. Uh, the other items are two four and a half inch DeWalt grinders and then a Dremel rotary tool with a diamond core bit. All those links are in the description. First up, I'm going to be using the, one of the DeWalt grinders with a uh, diamond blade. This is a continuous rim diamond cutting blade. The link for this is also in the description. Uh, this you have to be very careful using, number one, because you could cut your hand off, but also you could just uh, cut right into the bottom of a pot or cut your pot in half with one of these. So you have to be very careful with that. You can see I kind of cut into the wad and then finish grinding that down. You could just attack the wad from the top and grind it all the way down, but I'd rather save a little bit of the uh, use of the tool by cutting into the, the wad and then just cleaning up after that. Um, but there you can see cutting all the, the, doing the heavy grinding as I call it, getting the wads off the bottom. Here's another jar that has a wad stuck to the bottom. I have the, uh, the jar as well as the lid that I'll show you on this one. So you got three wads there still stuck on the rim. Uh, using the same diamond blade to cut into these wads and get those off. Sometimes you'll start cutting into wad and then the wad will just release from the vibration. Uh, also, if there's any heavy uh, drips or anything like that, I like to use the diamond blade for that. But just for general sanding now, something like this, this is the flap disc, which is also has a link in the description. Uh, this is a zirconia flap disc that usually is for polishing like metal. Uh, works really good on the bottom of a piece as well. Um, I'll show you another tool that I have for, for also sanding the bottom of pieces, doing kind of like the finish grinding. Here I have the, uh, going back to the diamond blade, cutting into the wads on the rim of a pot, I mean the, uh, the lid of the pot. Uh, this is definitely harder because these wads are sitting down in that gallery of the lid, uh, but I can cut away on those and then you'll see here in a second after I finish that, I come back with the rotary tool, uh, the diamond core. I like the, the bullet shaped uh, rotary uh, a bit for that because uh, it has a point to it but then also has a nice round section where you can get in there and clean up all those rough spots and with the diamond uh, bit it's, it's it's much like the uh, the diamond cutting blade uh, not quite as aggressive uh, but does a great job at smoothing up any rough spots in in hard to reach areas so here you like I said you can see me using the rotary tool uh, or the dremel tool with that diamond core bit and it cleans up real uh, cleans up the rim real nicely. Now coming back to the, the, the rim of the pot, I have a piece of uh, silicon carbide sandpaper. This is one of the sanding belts that I use on a tool. You'll see a, a bench grinder that you'll see in just a second, but this is a piece that I've cut up just to use uh, as a, like a hand piece of sandpaper. Uh, works really good to clean up. If there's not any, uh, any wad material or much left on the rim of a piece, I can do this instead of using any power tool, and it just cleans up real nicely the rim of the piece, so then I can just... Uh, uh, smooth that up and I don't wear gloves doing most of this work because it's really nice to be able to feel if there's any rough spots and so now that jar is finished and ready to sell other than maybe just a quick washing. 
Here's the mug that I did the heavy grinding on uh, just a minute ago. And this is my Win uh, bench grinder. It's a slow speed bench grinder with an expanding drum uh, on the on the end. And this is a three inch wide uh, expanding drum with silicon carbide sanding belts. Now the place that I got this from is no longer in business, so I can't put a link to that. But I I, I did put a link to the bench grinder in the description. But the actual sanding drum, I haven't needed to uh, buy one, or expanding drum, I haven't needed to buy another one of those yet, but uh, there are a couple places that I have sourced to try to find one of those. Um, so if you can find one, most of them need to go on a slow speed bench grinder. Uh, but this is really great because I can have both my hands on the piece uh, and have the sandpaper rotating uh, on, the, on the bench grinder, and it works really good to smooth up. Um, this is probably like a 60 grit sandpaper, um, but you can buy that in a whole bunch of different grits as well but the silicon carbide sandpaper does a great a great job at smoothing up the bottom of the piece even when I have used that um, diamond blade uh, and where it creates rough spots now this mug here uh, the wads came off without any heavy grinding but I still use this bench grinder with the sandpaper uh, because it's a whole lot quicker a whole lot easier on my arms and my elbows than hand sanding all of this uh, so using the bench grinder with that expanding disc um, is really good for smoothing that up and once again not wearing gloves so that I can feel how smooth the bottom is. Well there you have it there's a short and sweet version of all the tools and process of how I clean up the pots after wood firing to get them ready to sell. Uh, this takes hours and hours of work to get pieces finished. Uh, thankfully, there are some pieces that come out of the kiln and the wads just come right off the bottom and there's just some finished sanding that needs to be done. Uh, but there are usually quite a few pieces that need some heavy grinding and then every piece goes, just about every piece goes across that bench grinder with the expanding disc to do this finished grinding. And then depending on how, how dirty they get in that process, I can take them and wash them uh, to get them ready for sale. Uh, but uh, all in all, it's still it's all part of the process. I take pride in every bit of it and like to see the finished product when I'm done. A uh, piece that has gone literally from dirt in the ground to being fired with wood that I've, uh, I've collected, split, stacked, dried, built the kiln, all that. It's just it's great to, to be involved in the whole process. And uh, getting all these pieces cleaned up is a great uh, accomplishment after a wood firing. And it feels great to have them ready to sell. So thank you all for being here. And I hope you have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video. All right. Thanks. Bye.